Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. In this conversation, we're chatting with Stuart McAlbine, Director of Teaching and Learning at UWC Southeast Asia. Our full podcast conversation highlights the ways that a coaching culture was built at UWC, as well as the relationship between cognitive coaching and instructional coaching. This spotlight highlights the value of school leaders demonstrating their belief in the power of coaching in building that critical school culture. If you enjoy any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more conversations like this, please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. Remember, you can also listen to the full Coach Better episode wherever you get your podcasts. We are passionate about the impact coaching can have on student learning, school culture, and teacher professional growth, and we want to help you coach better. If you enjoyed today's episode, you are going to love our new resource for instructional coaches that you can find at coachbetter.tv slash start. As requested by our listeners and viewers, we are compiling all of our coaching resources in one place just for you, and we are just getting started. So check back often for more updated content. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today, Clint and I are excited to have the Director of Teaching and Learning at UWC Southeast Asia, Stuart McAlpine, here with us. Thank you for joining us, Stuart. Thank you very much. Um, We'd love to hear a little bit from you about your teaching and learning background, because we know you've done amazing things in education. Can you tell us a little bit about your history as an educator? Um, Okay. Uh, A brief history would be, you know, I grew up in schools, around schools with a teaching family. So I have loads of teachers in my family. And for the last eight, nine years, I've been in Singapore, where I'm Director of Teaching and Learning at UWC, where I oversee K-12 um, and all elements of our learning. So that's academics, service, outdoor ed, all those kind of things. Um, in other roles, I'm also Director of Education for Sky School that I started up with Polly and Mia to UWC alumni to provide a blended high school for refugees globally and that's currently operating in about six countries and I do a few educational projects outside of that like really lucky in the summer to work with UNDP on refugee education and a few other projects like that and in the end of this year I'll be moving to the Green School New Zealand as the founding head of learning. So kind of thinking about leadership and its role with coaching and the success of coaching in a school, as a school leader, how do you use your role to help amplify the work of coaches or support the work of coaches or spread the work of coaches, either in a cognitive coaching frame or an instructional coaching frame? Um, I think on the cognitive coaching side, I suppose, um, modeling it, talking about it, doing it, validating it, (laughs) you know, just that sort of sense of symbolic actions. And I also, um, so I'm a sort of agency trainer for cognitive coaching now, but wasn't, you know, and that's taken place over the last sort of six, seven years. But I suppose if if people recognize that those um, in sort of leadership teams are clearly signaling this is something that we believe in as a culture, it's not good for other people, but not for us, it's, it's this is us. Leadership is a set of shared behaviors, and these are behaviors we value as a culture. And I think that tonally really helps. And I think it was important that we started with the leadership team, because I see some schools where like, leaders might say, oh, that sounds like a great idea, you do it. Mm. Mm. And the message is, well, it's such a great idea, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> like, it doesn't work. So I think having, having visibly sort of that support for coaching, it's important. Um, I think in terms of instructional coaching, um, Again, it's not hierarchical, so it's like, how do you support it? it? might be a sort of hierarchical answer, but I think I just try to support as much as I can because I think it's so valuable. And one of the things we talk about is it's kind of a bridge between a school can say, we really want, you know, in our case, concept-based teaching and learning, or we want, you know, strong differentiation or whatever, whatever it is you think you want. 
the, the, the most effective and one of the few bridges between what you want and a classroom is a coach. <laughs> you know, they're the ones that are going to change thinking into behaviours. So I think being really clear that um, coaches are some of the most valuable and influential people in your school. They're one of the few people who can change behaviours quite quickly in the classroom, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do. And you don't do it through talking about it. Um, you know, so you can have a PD session. I'm going to talk about this. Okay, it won't work very well because teaching is a set of behaviours, not just a thought. So I think knowing that, talking about it, and then I just sort of informally support. So I sit with a K-12 coaching group. I try to support and coach those coaches about how they might come together, form a shared identity, have strong shared efficacy, build a community together, and then use that to grow and influence. So in whatever ways I can, I support that. But it's not hierarchical, and I think that would actually not help. That would be me getting in the way. So you mentioned something I think that's really uh, important and a real challenge for many coaches. You talked about the situation where leaders say, oh, that's a great idea, you go do it. How yeah. do you help leaders understand the value of coaching, whether it's cognitive coaching or instructional coaching? How do you help them make that shift? Maybe you could even tell us a little bit about how you came to that belief yourself. Um, I think one of the things, I think, I think it's whatever strategy suit the situation, but one thing that stands out of like, if it's good, if it's good for other people, it must be good for me, is I think Anne-Marie Chow, who's here as a lit coach, um, when I was teaching, even in high school, I was actually teaching TOK, and she's a middle school lit coach, and said like, we just do a coaching cycle with me for my TOK class, come along to my lesson, like spend some time with me in the class, then do some coaching conversations, then come back and we'll try some things that emerge. And we videoed that just verbatim, like start to finish and just put it online. And the idea, I'm not sure how many people actually watched it. I could probably find those stats. But the message was, if I'm willing to talk about things I want to work on in my teaching, and I'm director of teaching and learning, and I'm willing to make that very public and put it online and then do it, then the messaging is like, we're all here to learn. Like none of us are finished. And that was, you know, that's one symbolic action. But I think, Symbolic actions like that, where you just show, like, if you believe it, you believe it. And if you believe it, you should be doing it. So, like, that really sort of strong consolidation of um, these are our beliefs, these are what we think works, what's important. So show it, talk about it, do it. And I think that that is part of it, you know. Mm. So there wondering about the coaches that are in schools that don't have leaders that believe it like you do, as a coach, not as a leader, how could I help leaders understand the value mm -hmm. of coaching as a coach? Yeah, I think um, if they're willing, do a coaching cycle with them. Maybe don't video it and put it online if they're not feeling confident. But I know we've talked about that with um, coaches before. If they have you know, a, a specific leader that just doesn't think coaching is particularly valuable, a go-to is try to get them in a coaching cycle with you. Because everyone here teaches or should you know, teach at least one class and just ask them and just say, look, do you want, if you want to know what it feels like, do you want to do a coaching cycle with me? And then after that, if they're not converted, then, then maybe the coaching isn't that useful. I don't know. But like, you should be converted. If you're like, oh my God, that helped my teaching so much. That's so amazing. Why can't everyone have this all the time? We should have a hundred coaches. You know, you need to, I think having a reference experience of it really helps. And I guess if someone's really close to it and they're like, I don't believe anything. Well, that's, that is really hard and I don't know and I don't have great advice for anyone in that situation apart from try to work out what's going to be meaningful for that person, for them to see how valuable it is that teachers are learners like students are learners and learning is really good with a teacher and a coach who can help you learn to do it better. I think that, yeah, I think that frame of a, of a culture of learning at an entire school, right? And, and I... I talk about like moving away from maybe the idea of experts like we're not experts in our craft like because there's always room to get better but that idea if, if you're in a, in a working with a leader who who doesn't have that frame of how am I getting better as a leader or how can I help my teachers get better as teachers that I think is going to be a really hard sell but I think that's that's few and far between now, I think everybody would, would say, and you see it in mission statements all over the place, right? Like we are a culture of learners and we believe in lifelong learning. And hopefully that applies not just to the students who are in the seats, but also the teachers who are at the front of the room. 
Um, I want to go back to something that you said earlier um, that I thought was really powerful to hear a school leader say, and it was that coaching is the bridge between school goals and the classroom um, and really helping other leaders understand that like the, the, the coaches are like, yeah, that, that's where the, the rubber meets the road, so to speak, right? And how you're going to actually actualize all of these grand visions of what we want our school to become. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen by sitting in a PD session with all hundred teachers in the auditorium, listening to somebody click through 50 slides. Um, it's okay. How do you then take that, that idea and turn it into meaningful teaching and learning experiences? Um, I'm just curious to know, it, it sounds like that is, is within the culture of the administrative and the leadership team at UWC, is that something maybe, is that something that has been kind of always believed from the, the leadership team or is that a slow evolution of, oh yeah, actually we can do it through coaching. Um, it's not bringing in the one-off uh, uh, consultant or, you know, the three days before school starts that we're going to be able to get this, you know, maybe it's writer's workshop, reader's workshop, maybe it's a particular math program or whatever that is. How has that gone with the leadership team in, in all coming to that realization? Yeah, um, I think the honest answer is I, I don't know, in the sense, you know, if you said, like, how do you know wind is cool and water's refreshing? I'd be like, I don't know, it just is. <laughs> right. So I was like, how do you know that <laughs> you're in your culture, coaching is a bridge between the thinking and the behaviours? I don't know, because it feels pervasive. Like, I'm sure it's not pervasive for all people, so I think you will have leaders who maybe come in from a different school and they're like, Really? You've got coaches? What have you got the coaches for? Right. But I think if you're around it, you'll go, oh, that's, oh, I see now. Okay, now I got it. So I honestly don't know if you said, like, what was the starting point and what was the end point? Mm. Um, I, honestly, I honestly don't know. You know, it just seems that's part of the pervasive culture here. Right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation and there is so much more on the audio version. Don't miss subscribing to our podcast on any of your podcast subscribers under Coach Better. Mm -hmm.